It's pretty normal for newborns to come to the emergency department and for parents to be worried about their poo. It's very hard to know what is normal and what is not normal when it comes to newborn poo. Here are three things that parents most commonly worry about with their newborn's poo and also three things that as clinicians we need to make sure we check for. Number one, the first thing that parents worry about is this poo a normal colour. As the baby's diet changes from amniotic fluid to colostrum to milk and then later on to food, the colour of poo changes from a black colour to a green colour to yellow and to something else entirely. Honestly, most colours of poo in newborns are pretty normal, yellow, green, brown, they're all okay. The thing that we do worry about is this pale colour which can indicate biliary atresia which is not very common. Taiwan actually has a national stool colour card screening that can help with early detection of biliary atresia and also for those of you who are interested you will be happy to know that there is an app for that you can check out Poop MD if you want to know more. There will be a difference in what poo looks like between breastfed babies and bottle fed babies. Breastfed babies tend to be more whole grainy like mustard, bottle fed babies tend to have poo that is more like smooth peanut butter. There's something to put you off your lunch. But by 16 weeks, they're really pretty similar. So changing stool color is often normal. Lots of different variations of green, yellow, brown are pretty much normal. If it's very pale, then it's reasonable to be worried. Two, the second most common question we get asked by parents, is my baby pooing at, at a normal frequency? This is really common. Parents are worried that their child's not pooed for a few days or their child's pooing too often. And honestly, the frequency of newborn poo, it varies hugely. One baby might pass 10 stools a day. They might be small volume, they might be bigger volume. And Another baby might go for seven days without pooing and honestly both of these can be normal. It doesn't really depend just on the frequency of poo, it's going to depend on all the other things about the baby looking at is the baby growing, is the baby feeding well, is the baby weeing, is there anything else that we're worried about with the baby. So you can be reassured there is a huge range of what's normal. On average by a month baby's doing probably three or four poos a day. And what we find, of course, is as the volume of milk goes up, the volume of stool is also going to go up as well. As a clinician, we do often see parents whose newborns haven't pooed for a number of days. It's normally okay. I'm not wildly keen about giving glycerin chips to try to help get things moving because I think it just reinforces that there is a problem when usually there is not a problem. It's just normal. So unless there's something else you're worried about, it's probably just normal variation of poo. Three, the third most common thing we get asked by parents is about crying when they poo. Why are they crying when they're pooing? Is it normal? That they cry when they this is infant dyskesia it's not the same as constipation and it's really common what happens for a baby to be able to poo is you need to do two things you need to increase your intra-abdominal pressure and you need to relax your gluteal muscles and babies find this very hard to coordinate so what happens is that babies start crying and it's not crying because in pain they're crying to try and increase their intra-abdominal pressure but that's before they've learned to actually bear down to poo so they cry they increase their intra-abdominal pressure but their gluteal muscles don't relax and often parents say that they have to massage the baby's bottom and then they poo and that's very common. That's because what you're doing is making the gluteal muscles relax and then the baby poos and the baby settles. The good news is that this usually sorts itself out within a few weeks. So although it's very common, it will resolve itself and the baby will be completely fine. So this can be easily confused with constipation, but it is not the same thing. Okay, so that's three things that parents most commonly worry about. But what are about three things for us as clinicians to check that are red flags when babies come to us with poo problems? The first thing is to know things in the history that should be red flags to you with babies who have come with problems pooing. Make sure you take a good feeding history, look in particular for any change in the feeds, ask about a history of any blood or mucus in the stool. Think about a family history of any inflammatory bowel disease or other gastro problems and get a good feel for how long it's been a problem for as that's going to change your diagnosis. So that's red flags in the history. Number two, look for red flags in the exam. So you're going to do a thorough examination of this baby and there's certain things that you need to look out for that should be a warning to you in babies who have come with poo problems. The first thing you're going to look at is do they look generally well or is there anything you're worried about? Make sure you plot their weight and height in their red book and check how their growth has been. Look at their overall nutritional status. Do they look well grown? Do they look scrawny or skinny? Look for any skin tags as this can be an indication of IBD. Does the child have an anus and is it in the right position? This may seem obvious because it will probably have been picked up by then, but occasionally it has been missed. So make sure you look at the position of the anus. And finally, do they have any abnormal tone or reflexes? So here you're thinking about a neurological problem that's related to impaired pooing. These are the key things to look out for in the exam. And number three, as a clinician, it's really important to ask about meconium. So we know that as the fetus matures, you're surrounded by amniotic fluid and 
ingest anything that is floating alongside it. This is all swallowed down and retained till after birth, usually. And this process doesn't usually start to happen until after the 26th week of gestation. Most babies, around 90%, will pass meconium within 12 hours after the birth. Some babies, around 10%, will actually pass meconium before birth. And the thing that we worry about there is that the babies will then aspirate that, and that's where you worry about meconium aspiration syndrome. And that's because the meconium, if they pass it before, it, they're surrounded by meconium-stained amniotic fluid. And although the meconium itself isn't harmful, if it gets into your lungs, that's not ideal. Really, meconium should be passed within the first 24 to 48 hours of birth. And what you're looking for is, was it passed too early, i.e. before birth or too late? And too late is important when you're looking at babies who've got pooing problems, particularly if it's a problem with potential constipation. And the things that can, this can be an indicator of is Hirschsprung's disease, meconium plug syndrome, meconium ileus, of which cystic fibrosis is the most common cause. Also, maybe an indicator of anorectal malformations and some much less common surgical causes. So if you know your red flags in your history, your red flags in the exam and ask about meconium, these are gonna pick up the key things that you would be worried about as a clinician. And there you have it, the three most common things that parents worry about and the three things that we need to look out for as clinicians. That is everything you need to know about newborn poo. If you enjoyed this video, you will love my video on how to do a newborn check, which you can see here.